So I wanted to make a video about uh, my friend. My friend did seven sessions so far. I had seven sessions. In the beginning, he had a lot of, well, let's say expectation because I told him all about it. So he was, he had this thing in his mind that he needed to move, he needed to scream, he needed to make things happen. And the thing was, I learned this through learning, learning about his experience. He has never meditated a lot. He has never done a lot of mindfulness work. So whatever comes up in his experience, it's always his experience, right? So I mean, a thought comes, he, he believes he thinks it. An emotion comes, he believes he thinks it. Um, he, he wants to do something, an impulse comes, he believes he wants to do it, right? He does something. When you do mindfulness work for a prolonged period of time, like three, four, five, six, seven, eight months, what you do is you bring your focus, your attention to a stillness inside of you, right? And you become an observer of everything that is passing by. So because you focus on one thing, your breath or the spaciousness inside of you or the stillness inside of you, you notice that all the things, movements, thoughts, ideas, emotions, energies, they all happen by themselves. Everything is happening by itself you're not controlling that. And then you you feel the distinction between this is I and this is what is happening. Right? These things are all just happening. And then, because you have that distinction, if you go to a cap session, you can clearly, as the observer, see, okay, now the energy is coming in. You know, you can notice it. You have the, the perceptive ability to see the, like the layers of of, of actions, of things occurring. So you, your perception becomes more subtler. So you can see, okay, the energy is coming in. Now your movement wants to happen, but I'm not moving it. But it could, because he never did mindfulness work. He never meditated. He never did all that. He just went in there. He says, I feel like doing this, so I do this. I feel like shouting, so I do this. But honestly, it doesn't feel like the energy is doing it or the cap energy is working. It feels like I am doing it. It feels like I am like thinking, I should do this, so I'm doing it. I should do that, I'm doing this. And I tell him, no, 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 no. That's correct. You're getting the impulses and you're just allowing the impulses to occur. That's how it works. That's how it works. The only difference is you think that you you will get you will get this, this sensation or feeling or experience that something outside of you is it will come into you and almost like take you over and do something to you. It doesn't work like that. It's still your energy which just comes alive. And if you don't have the perceptive ability or the, the, the perception to see those subtler, um, those subtler um, movements inside of you or outside of you, you, your experience will be very, let's say, concrete. The more attention you've spent being mindful about it, being looking, looking, observing, the more subtler you can perceive all the layers. So as his sessions now progress, he realized that every time he goes to a session, things happen, things occur, like he's super activated, he feels a lot of emotions, he feels a lot of energy coming, streaming, he, he's, he, he releases a lot of anger, he's integrating throughout his week, throughout his weeks, He's, he's becoming more and more stable in himself, like standing in his own power, in his own truth. He's more truthful towards his partner, towards himself. And there's also a gentleness that I've seen about him. He's, he's become more honest and gentle with himself and towards me also. It was very um, encouraging to see. Now, what he did yesterday was very interesting. Before going to a camp session, he actually did a meditation and it's called the invitation by um, Muji so the invitation is a meditation where you go through this process of disidentifying from everything and just being in this neutrality and it's a very simple thing and it's really great it's really amazing it works try it out I'll make a, another video about it and it's really amazing so if you find the video, the invitation, it starts at 
minute 44 till minute 58 or something. So when he did that, he got into this neutral state and when he laid down, everything just occurred. He allowed things to happen. He allowed things to occur. Like he, he realized how before he was so hooked on to wanting something to happen, expecting something to happen, um, forcing like to have a certain kind of experience. And now he was just observing how things were occurring, how things were happening. And he had no preference. He had no like or dislike. He just like, okay, this is what's happening now. This is what's happening now. Sounds want to come out. This is happening. This, And he was just noticing everything. And because of that, the process could unfold way deeper and way smoother. And like I saw him, it felt like he was almost one with the process instead of fighting and struggling against the process so that's really encouraging to see how how that evolves <laughs> yeah, because honestly i share a lot of my process here but not everybody's gonna have a process like me sure people will have similarities and i mean you, you can everybody can have the same experience right because Nobody's really special, we're all the same. But you have a unique um, configuration with your body, with your mind, with your emotions, with your spirit, with your soul, with your uh, consciousness. Everything is very unique. So there are different puzzle pieces that will be moved and um, adjusted and realigned. So your experience of alignment might might be experienced in a different sequence or or in a different facet than mine. With me, it's mostly energetic movement and visual, visual, visual. With others, it's more energetic or more feelings, feelings, feelings. So it all depends on where you are and what you are sensitive to, what you are ready for. But you can develop all these things. I mean, mindfulness. You can so if you want to broaden your mind just to mindfulness, if you want to broaden your capacity to be aware of the energies and work with the energies, you do Kriya Yoga. If you want to um, uh, broaden your awareness of like new possibilities of perceiving in, the, in, different, in, in different ways, do meditations by Joe Dispenza where he literally opens your consciousness to to just be open to, to, to every possibility and not only to the set limited of possibilities that you are accustomed to and that you, you've been accustomed to. So, that, I mean, you can develop everything. If you want to develop your third eye ability to, to be able to, to have more perceptive visions and have more, let's say, visual experiences, do either Kriya Yoga or Isha Kriya by Sadhguru. Like if you do that for a while, you will see that ability will open and it will develop. I mean, every we, we all have the same bodies, right? If you're not born um, sick or, you know, if you're not born with a... If you are born healthy and fully um, how people are usually born, right, generally, we're all the same, right? We just have different psychology and different spirit and soul. but. Beside that, we're all the same. Consciousness is the same, body is the same, the functions are the same. So, yeah, just uh, decide for yourself, what do I want to get out of CAP? I talked about this yesterday with um, some people, and I was like, what do you get, what do you hope to get out of it? And most of them were like, I want to release anger. Oh, I heard from people that, if I come here, I will be able to release anger. If I come here, I will be able to to go through new layers. To Like I'm ready to go through a next phase of releasing, of healing. So, yeah, that's great. And I think it's, uh, it's true. But right now, I'm on this point in my own process where I'm, I'm realizing, like, how long are you supposed to be healing? How long can you continue? Like, it can be an endless ongoing process, right? You can heal forever. Like, where does it end? Because I know people who, 
who don't do that, they go into non-duality. They, they are, they are, they are all about self-realization. And some do get self-realized, and some don't, and they're and they're stuck in those in those loops. So it's like, sure, you you might need to heal a couple of things, but do you really need to go through like lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes and through a whole life healing all the time, or can you just go to the core of who am I, your identity, become self-realized, and allow all those things to happen by themselves? That's like a thing I'm now like deciding upon. Like, how long will I like keep doing this until I realize that it's like, hmm, it's like a never-ending goose chase. Right? There are always new gooses. There are always new things to to heal, to discover, to experience. And there's this thing I remember. Somebody said, you can be so addicted to experience that you lose sight of mm, of experiencing yourself, right? You might get this, this notion or this, this almost like illusion you need experiences to exist right and you need experiences to feel alive to to be yourself but if you have gone through a lot of experiences and a lot of people say that they're like i've experienced so much i've gone through so much i just want to rest i just want to be i don't want to experience anymore i'm tired of it I've seen it all i've done it all so I, I do feel that. I do feel like there's this threshold of enough is enough. Like, because essentially we all want just, just to experience our true essence, our full openness, our full aliveness, the gentleness, the love, the, yeah, the aliveness, being alive. I remember this story by Sadhguru where he says, you know, the difference between Somebody who goes to a bar, somebody goes to, to women, somebody who has a family, somebody goes to make money. They're all seeking the same thing. They just want to feel alive, right? They want to they wanna do things because there they feel alive. They feel, ah, I feel alive, it's okay. So they're seeking the experience of being alive in those activities like achieving something, earning a lot of money, buying a house, buying this, doing that, uh, going to, to, you know, being with girls, picking up girls, having a lot of sex with girls. Um, they're just seeking to be alive, right? But the seeking energy, and that's the interesting thing, the seeking energy is always seeking something outside, right? But who is seeking? If, if you read, if you go back to the root of the seeking, there's just energy, there's just beingness, and it doesn't seek. The seeking energy is the content of our consciousness, which tries to make itself complete, which tries to make itself whole. Mm. It's very uh, funny to, to notice that distinction when you're doing things or you're going after things to fulfill a desire to you know to seek some part of yourself to seek some kind of redemption to seek some kind of experience like i want to go there and do that because then i'll feel like this or when you have a genuine desire to go somewhere but you're very calm there's no anxiety you just go through it and you're just experiencing it it's like you're on this this very straight and stable en energy that's just like guiding you, you're flowing towards it. Whereas the other one is very fractic and very unstable and very, um, and cr creates a lot of effort, it demands a lot of effort and creates a lot of inner struggle because you, you, you need to adjust, you need to control, you need to this, you need to that. There's no, it's like the, 
there's a constant fear to lose. There's a constant fear like, what if it doesn't work out? There's a constant tension. Whereas the other one is just open. Hmm. Anyway, enjoy yourselves.